Praise the Lord. I welcome you to our Bible study tonight. I pray the Lord will open our eyes of understanding that will behold wondrous, wonderful things in His world. In Jesus' name. Let's pray before we begin. Father, we thank you for the Bible study. Thank you for the way you are developing your people. And thank you for everything you have been teaching us all through this uh, gospel according to St. Mark. We are asking, O oh Lord, that tonight once again, your spirit will guide us into all truth. And your spirit will empower us, energize us, give us the grace to do what you are instructing us to do in your word in Jesus' name. And the blessing of obedience to your word will be upon every life. Thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We are coming to Mark tonight. And we are studying from Mark chapter 12, from verse 35 all through to verse 44. That's Mark chapter 12, reading from verse 35. And Jesus answered and said, while he taught in the temple, how say the scribes that Christ is the son of David. For David himself said by the Holy Ghost, the Lord said to my Lord, sit thou on my right hand, Till I make thine enemies thy footstool. David therefore himself calleth him Lord. And whence is he then his son? And the common people had him gladly. The Lord was teaching in the temple. He always did. Everywhere he had opportunity where the people were gathered together, he taught. They might be individuals, they might be families, they might be outside at the seashore, they might be on the field somewhere, and they might be even in the wilderness, in the desert, or they might be in the temple or in the synagogue. There was one thing he always did, he always taught. And that's what he expects of us today, that like he taught every time, and like he taught at every opportunity, we too should take the opportunity every time to individuals, every time to families, every time to friends, every time to neighbors, every time even in the open, every time in the auditorium, in the church, whenever we're able. And then he asked a question. Because the scribes had been saying, the Messiah when he comes, the Lord when he comes, he'll be the son of David. And they went that far and no further. And so Jesus asked them now, how is it that David himself said, and he said this by the Holy Ghost, that sit down on my right hand until I make your enemies the footstool, that David called him Lord. How then you see a son? Those scribes could not answer. But the, but the people, the congregation, the general people, the common people, had him gladly. In verse 38, and he said unto them in his doctrine, Beware of the scribes which love to go in long clothing and love salutations in the marketplaces and the chief seats in the synagogues and, and the uppermost rooms at peace, which devour widows' houses, and for a pretense make long prayers, these shall receive the greater condemnation. Then Jesus warned the people concerning how they pay attention to what the scribes taught, what those Pharisees taught, because most of the time they were misleading the people. And Christ was so open. And Christ was so clear. And Christ was so uncompromising you know, that he warned the people of listening to error, of listening to falsehood, of giving attention, of giving ear, of giving their faith and confidence to error or falsehood. 
And now we're told in verse 41, And Jesus sat over against the treasury and beheld how the people cast money into the treasury, and many that were rich cast in much. Would you understand that Jesus notices everything? He notices our faithfulness. He, notice, he notices our stewardship. He notices how we worship, how we pay attention. He notices what we give when we're the house of God, and even what we give when we are in our communities. And there came a certain poor widow, and she threw into mites which make a farthing. And he called unto him his disciples, and says unto them, Verily I say unto you, that this poor widow has cast more in than all they which have cast into the treasury. For all they did cast in of their abundance, but she of her penury, but she of her want, but she in her poverty did cast in all that she had, even all her living. That's the word we're studying tonight. And I pray that the Lord will give us understanding. The topic is proper response to the Lordship of Christ. Proper response to the Lordship of Christ. The Lord is expecting us that when we hear about Him as Lord, we hear about Him as Savior, we hear about Him as Emmanuel, God with us, that we will respond to that. We'll not just hear and then go away. We'll not just read and then go away. We'll not just listen to the teaching, to the Word of God, and then go away and do nothing about it. There must be a proper response. If there's a proper response, there's an improper response. What's an improper response? I hear, I appreciate that. I hear, I relate that. I hear, and I question that. And I hear, I argue about that. I hear, I don't believe that is an improper response. What's the proper response? When I hear, and I say, thank you, Lord, that gives me better understanding. That gives me a new understanding. And because of this new understanding, I want to have a right approach now. I want to have a good faith now in the Lord. Because of what I've heard, I want to perform. I want to do. I want to be obedient to what I have learned. Proper obedience, proper response to the Lordship of Christ. There are three things we're looking at as we divide the passage I've read to you to three parts. Number one, the exposition of the Lordship of David's son. The exposition is in the word of God. And so Jesus said, have you not read and have you not seen what David said about him, about Christ? And he gave them exposition. He gave them explanation. He gave them exhortation. He gave them enlightenment as to what they have heard. The exposition of the Lordship of David's son. Point number two, his exposure of the leaven of deceptive scribes. He warned them about the scribes. He said, those scribes, they were deceivers. Those scribes might pray long prayers. They might wear a kind of religious uniform, a religious garb or garment. They might walk a particular way. They might even change their voice and talk a particular way. And they might look dignified and look honorable and, and look impo imposing. And yet Jesus said, beware of their leaven. Beware of their error. Beware of their falsehood and beware of their deception. Point number two, his exposure. His exposure on the leaven of deceptive scribes. Point number three, our expression of love and devoted service. Our expression of love and devoted service. As you look at all these three points, there is something important to understand. 
As you look at these three points, there is something dangerous to avoid. As you look at these three points, there is a devotion for you to apply and for us too to express our expression of love and devoted service. I come now to point number one. In point number one, I'm reading once again in Mark chapter 12, reading from verse 35. Mark chapter 12, verse 35. And Jesus answered and said, while he taught in the temple, how say the scribes that Christ is the son of David? They have heard, they had heard over and over that the scribes were teaching, the Pharisees were teaching, the Sadducees were teaching, those religious leaders, those religious preachers, they were teaching the people that Christ is the son of David. And now Jesus wanted the people to understand in what sense, how is he the son or the seed of David? We'll come to verse 36. For David himself said by the Holy Ghost. Stop there for a moment. It's wonderful to, for us to understand that whatever we read in the Bible, Old Testament, because David lived in the Old Testament, the Psalms were written in the Old Testament. All those declarations, all those prophecies, all those pronouncements, everything David said, and the other prophets and the other kings and the other people said, he said, David said, by the Holy Ghost. If, then, if they didn't take the words of David, they were not rejecting David, they were rejecting the word and the revelation of the Holy Ghost. He said, David said himself, by the Holy Ghost. It means that those people, they didn't just talk, they didn't just open their mouth and give out their opinions. They spoke by the Holy Ghost. The Lord said to my Lord, he said this is what David said, and he said it by the Holy Ghost, the Lord, capital L-O-R-D. That's referring to God Almighty. That's referring to El Shaddai. That's referring to the I am that I am. He said the Lord, God himself, the creator of the heavens and the earth, he said, he said unto my Lord. You see that Lord, capital L, but small O-R-D. That's referring to another a divine personality. That's referring to Jesus. That's referring to Christ. He said the Lord, God, said unto the Lord, his only begotten Son, sit thou on my right hand. Sit thou on my right hand uh, till I make thine enemies thy footstool. David therefore himself calleth him Lord. David by the Holy Ghost called him Lord. And whence is he then his son? And the common people had him gladly. Why? Because when those scribes said what they said, they didn't explain. They didn't make people to understand. They just quoted and quoted and repeated the word of God. But now that illumination is coming, explanation is coming, exhortation is coming, and the understanding, proper understanding of the word is coming. The people heard and they heard him gladly. Now when it says, the Lord said unto my Lord, where did David say that? Let's come to Psalm 110. Psalm 110. Isn't it uh, illuminating and lightning that Jesus took his teaching uh, of the people from the word of God? He didn't say the Old Testament is gone. It's not important. The Old Testament is false. It's erroneous. No, not at all. He said what David said. What the preacher said, what the prophet said in the Old Testament, they said by the Holy Ghost. Look at Psalm 110, I'm reading from verse 1. This is what Jesus was quoting. This is what Jesus Christ was enlightening the people on. Psalm 110, verse 1. The Lord said unto my Lord, 
the Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou at my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. If you look at the top of that psalm, Psalm 110, you'll see it's a psalm of David. Would you see that Jesus Christ is correct in everything he said, even in the little details that many people may not think of or take care of? Jesus said, there is a psalm, 110, and that David wrote that psalm. And David said that psalm. And what did David say in that psalm? He said, the Lord, can you see all capitals, said unto my Lord. Whenever Jesus quoted the Bible, he quoted it right. He quoted it well. He didn't, he didn't alter anything, adulterate anything, modify anything. He said it, he quoted it exactly as David said it. It says, the Lord said unto my Lord, sit thou at my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. Now Jesus said another thing. He said, David said that by the Holy Ghost. David said that by the Holy Ghost. And we need to understand, and you need to understand, that everything will reach in the Word of God. From the Old Testament all through to the New Testament, everything comes by the Holy Ghost. Number one, it's not an opinion of men. Number two, it is not a congesture. I think, I feel, I think this will be all right. It is not the tradition of man. And it is not the proverbs of their community. It's not a collection of the ideas of the Israelitish people. It is the word inspired by the Holy Ghost. Come to Second Peter chapter 1. Second Peter chapter 1. And I'm reading this in verse 21. Second Peter chapter 1 verse 21. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. That's exactly what Jesus was saying. He said, all those uh, preachers, all those prophets, all those kings, David included, they said what they said by the Holy Ghost. That's attesting to the, New Te to the Old Testament that the Old Testament came to us by the Holy Ghost. If the Old Testament came to us by the Holy Ghost, how about the New Testament now? How has that come unto us? Can we say the same thing you know, that Christ has said about David? about the kings uh, in the Old Testament, about the prophets in the Old Testament, about all the people that declared the mind of God, the will of God, the word of God in the Old Testament that they spoke by the Holy Ghost. Let's come to John. John, we're looking at uh, chapter 16. I'm, I'm reading to you from verse 13. John, chapter 16. Verse 13, now and now, chapter 16, reading from verse 13. How be it, when the, when the Spirit of truth is calm, that's the Holy Ghost, that's the Holy Spirit, when the Spirit of truth is calm, it will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. Already we have established David and all the prophets and all the kings and all the people that spoke in the Old Testament, they spoke by the Holy Ghost that moved them. And now Christ is saying, the Holy Ghost is also going to come to the disciples, to the apostles, and he will guide them into all truth. And he will hear from him and hear from heaven, and he will teach them, and he will guide them. Look at John chapter 14, verse 16, verse 26. John chapter 14, verse 26. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, 
O the Father will send in my name. He shall teach you all things. You see that? It's the watch of God. And it's by the Holy Ghost. When that comforter, the Holy Ghost has come, he will teach you all things. Look at this. And bring all things to your remembrance. Whatsoever I have said unto you. Can I explain to you what that means? Everything that Matthew recorded, Matthew chapter 1 up to chapter 28, the Holy Ghost brought to his remembrance all that Christ had said and done. Everything Mark wrote, Mark chapter 1 to Mark chapter 16, the Holy Ghost brought to his remembrance all that Christ has done and said. Every, everything that Luke wrote, the Holy Ghost brought to his remembrance chapter 1 to chapter 24, all that Jesus had done and said, everything that John wrote from chapter 1 to chapter 21, the Holy Ghost brought to his remembrance all that Christ had said. And not only that, he will teach you things to come. He will guide you into all truth from Acts of the Apostles all through to Revelation, the rest of the New Testament, everything by the Holy Ghost. Everything by the Holy Ghost. Have confidence then when you read your Bible. Have confidence then you're reading Old Testament, you're reading New Testament, you're reading any part of the Bible as the Holy Ghost has said. He said it by Moses, by the Holy Ghost. He said it through Joshua by the Holy Ghost. He said it through David by the Holy Ghost. He said it through Isaiah by the Holy Ghost. He said it through Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts of the Apostles, everyone, Paul. He said by the Holy Ghost. That's what, why we're told in 2 Timothy chapter 3. 2 Timothy chapter 3. And I'm reading from verse 16. 2 Timothy chapter 3, reading from verse 16. All scripture... Is given by inspiration of God. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. It was inspired by the Lord. And so everything we read, don't just say, uh, Moses said, by the Holy Ghost. Don't just say, David said, you must understand, by the Holy Ghost. Don't just say, Paul said, you must understand, by the Holy Ghost. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for correction, for reproof, and for, and for doctrine, and for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, that the man of God may be matured, that the man of God may be complete through thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Let's come back to Mark chapter 12. In Mark chapter 12, I'm reading from verse 35 again. Mark chapter 12, we're reading from verse 35. And Jesus answered and said, while he taught in the temple, I will say the scribes that Christ is the son of David. For David himself said by the Holy Ghost, the Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou on my right hand till I make thine enemies thy footstool. David therefore himself calleth him Lord. And whence is he then his son? He's telling us something about Christ. There is a human side of Christ. He was born of Mary and he came into this world and is the son of man. On the one hand, the son of man. On the one hand, the seed of David. On the one hand, the son of David. That talks about his humanity. We're looking at Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1, I'm looking at verse 3. Concerning his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, which was made of the seed of David according to the flesh. The seed of David according to the flesh. And yet, we must understand, there's not only the humanity of Christ that he put on our flesh, and yet he was sinless, he had no sin, he lived like us. He was hungry, he was thirsty, he even slept in the boat in the sheep, and then he ate 
of the disciples. He died for them. That's about his humanity. But we must also understand his divinity. And it's the divinity that makes him the Lord of David. Is the seed of David, the son of David. He came through the lineage of David. He was born into this world, the seed of the woman, the son of Abraham, the son of David. That's humanity. Now it's divinity. Look at verse 4. Romans chapter 1, verse 4. And declared to be the son of God with power. Declared to be the son of God with power. In verse 3, it says, of the seed of David. The son of David, humanity. But now in verse 4, is declared to be the son of God with power. According to the spirit of holiness. That's the Holy Spirit. According to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead. So we learn about Christ. On the one hand, he has humanity. On the other hand, he has divinity. On the one hand, the son of man, the siege of David. On the other hand, he is the son of God. And let's look at chapter 1 of Luke. Luke chapter 1, and we're reading the words of an angel. The words of an angel. I'm coming to Luke chapter 1, and I'm reading from verse 26. Luke chapter 1, verse 26. And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph and of the house of David. Sent to Mary, the virgin, espoused, betrothed, Unto Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came in unto her and said, and, and said, Hail, thou art highly favored. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, when Mary saw the angel, she was troubled at the scene and cast in her mind what manner of salutation should it, this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God, and behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. But started to he shall be great and shall be called the son of the highest. He shall be great, the son of the highest. That's his divinity. That's his divinity. That he is, is the son of the almighty God. And then it says, and the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father, David, his father, David, his father, David, his humanity. He'll be the son of David. He'll be the seed of David. And yet at the same time, he will be the son of God. Look at verse 33. And he shall reign over the house of David forever. And his kingdom, and of his kingdom, there shall be no end. Then said Mary, Unto the angel, how shall this be seen? I know not a man. And the angel said, or answered and said unto her, Look at this, the Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore, that holy sin that shall be born of thee, born of thee, that is humanity, Born of thee, Mary the virgin was a human being. And she was going to give birth to a son, which will show that he had humanity, and yet shall be called the Son of God. The angel said, he'll have humanity, he'll have divinity, he'll be called 
the Son of God. Look at verse 37. The angel said, but with God nothing shall be impossible. He can bring the two natures together. And he can have humanity. He can have divinity. All that is impossible with man. But with God all things are possible. That's talking to us about the Lord Jesus Christ having humanity on, one, on the one hand, having divinity on the other hand. We're looking at Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2. And we're reading from verse 8. Philippians chapter 2. Why don't we back up to verse 6. Who being in the form of God... That's divinity. He's talking about Christ. And it says, he was in the form of God. He thought it not trouble to be equal with God, but he made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. That's his humanity. He has the form of God. He's the son of God. That's his divinity. And now he's made in the likeness of men. That's his humanity. And being found in fashion as a man, as a man, humanity, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even to the death of the cross, wherefore God also has highly exalted him and given him a name above every name that at the name of of Jesus, every knee shall bow of the things of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Very clear then, the son of David, the son of God, Lord of David, and yet the offspring of David. Come back now to Mark chapter 12. Mark chapter 12. Let's look at uh, the attitude of the people, the joy of the people when they heard about the two sides of Christ, human and yet divine. We're looking at verse 37. Therefore, David himself calleth him Lord, and whence is he a son? And the common people had him gladly. The common people had him gladly. He taught well. He did well. He solved their problems. He saved their soul. He enlightened them. He opened the scriptures unto them. The same thing he does today. He is our savior. And he is our healer. He is a deliverer. He is our teacher. He is the prophet that is to come like unto Moses. He is the king. He is the priest. He is the redeemer. He is all in all in our lives. And like the people of those days, we too will join them. And we say, praise the Lord. I belong to him. He is teaching me. He is what by the Holy Ghost. And the people heard him gladly. How happy you are. How happy I am that he himself by the Holy Ghost can teach us even today the exposition on the Lordship of David's son. We come to point number two now, his exposure of the leaven of deceptive scribes. He tells us in verse 38, let's come to verse 38, and he said unto them in his doctrine, beware of the scribes which love to go in long clothing and love salutations in the market places and the chief seats in the synagogues and the uppermost rooms at the at feasts, which devour widows' houses and for a pretense make long prayers. These shall receive the greater condemnation. It was Jesus Christ told the people that listened and he told his own disciples, he said, you see what the scribes are bringing out, what the scribes are teaching, what the scribes, the scribes are trying to explain is not right. It's not the true doctrine. It's leaven that will corrupt everything that we have. 
when it refers to what they were teaching as leaven. Let, let's look at uh, Matthew chapter 16. Matthew chapter 16. I'm reading from verse 6. Matthew chapter 16, verse 6. Jesus said unto them, Take heed and beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. Those are the scribes. Those are the teachers of the people. Those were the religious leaders, Pharisees and Sadducees, leaders among the religious people. And he spoke about what they were teaching as leaven. He said, take care and take heed and beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. Look at verse 7. And they reasoned among themselves, saying, It is because we have taken no bread. You see, how could the disciples think about that? He was talking about doctrine. He was talking about teaching. He was talking about the leaven of the scribes and the Pharisees. And was saying, take heed. This is the way they thought. When people are going to bake bread, they mix the dough and then they put yeast. That yeast was called leaven. And it is the yeast, the leaven, that will make the bread to swell, that will make the bread to look like bread and not to look like another thing, that will not make it compact together. And so they thought it was warning them about bread. Be careful, take heed of the leaven of the scribes and the Pharisees. Immediately they were thinking, Oh, well, some Pharisees are baking bread, and when the Lord is saying, don't go and buy bread from there, not at all. That's not what he's saying. Look at uh, the next verse there, in verse, um, looking at uh, that, in verse 9, in verse 8, in verse which when Jesus perceived, said unto them, O ye of little faith, why reason ye among yourselves? Because we have bought, brought no bread. Do ye not yet understand? Neither remember the five loaves of the, of the five thousand and how many baskets uh, ye took up. Neither the seven loaves of the four thousand and how many baskets ye took up. How is it that ye do not understand? that I speak, eat not of the concerning bread, that ye should beware of the leaven. He repeated it again, of the leaven of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Look at this, Numbers 12. Then understood they how he bade them not to beware of the leaven of bread. It's not saying, uh, don't buy bread from that quarter. Don't buy bread from that community. Don't buy bread because uh, the owner of the bakery is a Pharisee or Sadducee. No, not at all. They now understood. He was warning them of the doctrine of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. So he said, beware of the leaven. Beware of the doctrine of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Look at Luke chapter 12. Luke chapter 12, he said the same thing here and here. He wants us to have proper understanding that the scribes have their leaven, the scribes have their tradition, the scribes have their doctrines, the scribes they have their falsehood, and we should beware. My buy bread, ordinary bread from their shop, ordinary bread from their market, ordinary bread from their grocery, but we should not buy their religion. We should not buy their leaven. We should not buy their doctrine. Luke chapter 12, verse 1. In the meantime, when they were gathered together, an innumerable multitude of people, in so much that they trod one upon another, he began to say unto the disciples, first of all, look at this, beware ye of the leaven of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy. 
He said, don't take on their attitude. Don't take on their habit. Their habit is that of deception. Is that of falsehood? Is that of hypocrisy? For there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed, and neither hid that shall not be known. Let's come back to Mark chapter 12, reading from verse 38. It said, Beware. It was exposing them, it was exposing their error. It says in Mark chapter 12, Verse 38, and he said unto them in his doctrine, Beware of the scribes which love to go in long clothing and love salutations in the marketplace and the cheap uh, seats in the synagogues and the earth uppermost rooms at the fields which devour widows' houses. And for he pretends make long prayers. It's not prayer to be answered. It's not prayer to make, uh, to give any benefit to the people they are praying for. It's for show. And there are people like that today. They can pray and ask you to bring your prayer request. Not that prayer request will be answered. It's for show. And they can advertise prophecy and prayer and the promise and everything at this time now if i pray for you and this will not come near you that will not come near you and then after that you also send some money and send offering along with that and we will fast for you we'll pray for you there are different kinds of prayers and the lord said these christ were praying making long prayers just to deceive the people for he pretends they make long prayers, these shall receive greater condemnation. I pray as the Lord has told us to beware, has told us uh, not to get near them and not to get involved. You will not get involved. I will not get involved. We shall not get involved in Jesus' name. Let's come to Matthew chapter 23. Matthew chapter 23. It tells us in Matthew chapter 3, in verse, uh, a reading from verse 13. But woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye shut up the kingdom of heaven against men, for ye neither go in yourselves. They were not born again, those scribes, those religious people. You could talk about the um, Old Testament, talk about David, and you could talk about Solomon. They could talk about Moses. They could talk about the temple. They could talk about the synagogue. They could talk about Herod or, or Nicodemus or anybody. But they were not born again. They neither went in themselves, neither suffered, neither permitted them that are entering in to go in. Want to you scribes, Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye devour widows' houses. That's why Jesus said, beware. And you know, sometimes it's very much surprising that some of those people who are saying, bring your money, we'll pray for you. Pray, bring your money, we'll prophesy into your life. Bring your money, we'll do this and that. They are getting money from people who are widows, from those who are poor. And they are rich already. Instead of giving out, instead of helping those widows, they are getting the little that the widows have. And the widows themselves, because they're expecting a miracle, because they're expecting an answer from heaven, because they're expecting that their request will be met, they're sending their money. They don't have enough. They don't have anything. Out of the little they have, those widows are still sending. And they don't have any, any breadwinner. And yet, they allowed these cries and they allowed these uh, pretenders to devour them. I pray God will give us understanding. It's not everybody that carries Bible. It's not everybody that prophesies. It's not everybody that promises something. It's not everybody that is saying, I'm praying for you, I'm fasting for you. It's not everybody that says, I have a word for your life, I have a word for your family. It's not every one of them that is really of God. It says, for ye devour widows' houses, and for it pretends make long prayer. Therefore shall ye receive the greater 
condemnation. Look at verse 15. One to you, scribes, Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye compass sea and land to make one proselyte, and when he is made, ye make him to forge more child, the child of hell than yourselves. Look at verse 33. In verse 33, ye serpents, ye generation of vipers, how can ye escape the damnation of hell? You will not allow a candidate of hell to deceive you. A candidate of hell to bring false prophecy into your life and false prayer for you. I pray God will give you the wisdom and God will give you the intelligence and God will give you the watchfulness to beware, to take heed like the Lord himself has commanded us to take heed and to beware. We're coming to Second Corinthians. Second Corinthians chapter 11. I'm reading from verse 2 and verse 3. Second Corinthians chapter 11 and reading from verse 2. Before I read that verse 2, you know, the disciples... The members of the church of the living God, the children of God, they were the bride of Christ. And the bride still continues today. The church, the real church, those who are really born again, were the bride of Christ. And Christ was concerned over his bride. Christ was concerned over these precious souls that are precious unto him. That's why he said, beware. And the same thing, if you're a minister, the same thing, if you're a real preacher of the word of God, you will have concern over the bride of Christ. You will have concern over the true believers. You'll have concern over the children in the children's church. You'll have concern over the youth, the young people in the youth ministry. You'll have concern over our members in the campus. You have concern over the fathers and the mothers and the adults and the professionals, everyone in the church. Because those who are born again are real members of the body of Christ and they are the bride of Christ. You don't want an evil person. You don't want a stranger to sway them up their feet. Come to second. Corinthians chapter 11 verse 2. I am jealous over you with godly jealousy. That's what Christ had. He had jealousy over his own disciples. That's why he said beware. He was jealous over them. He wanted to keep them. He wanted to preserve them. He wanted them to get to heaven at last. And we have the same heart of the chief shepherd. The same heart of the good shepherd. That's how, as he warned his own people, that's why we are, warned the, we are warning the people of God today, for I am jealous over you with godly jealousy, for I have espoused you to warn us, man, that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. But I fear, lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled, deceived Eve through a subtlety, so your minds should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. Look at verse 13. For such, the scribes, for such, the Pharisees, for such, the Sadducees, for such, the false prophets, for such, pray for me, pray for me, prophet, for such, the people who are selling prayer, for such, who are commercializing religion, for such, who want to steal the a sheep in the fold of those who are really born again. They will not do the evangelism towards the sinners that are outside, but the people who are already born again, who are even touched the word of God, who are safe and secured in the fold of Christ, they're running after them. And they have a tent here, they have a sanctuary there, and they're inviting, come, 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 leave that other place. Why? Why will you tell a child to leave his house? He gets enough food here. He gets 
gets enough sustenance there. He gets enough care there. Why don't you go to the people that are homeless? Why don't you go? Why don't they go to the people that are sinners and preach the gospel to them if they really had the gospel? But no, they are wolves in sheep's clothing. That's why it says, for such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great sin if his ministers also be transformed as they pretend as ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. The Lord has warned us, and I pray we'll take heed and we will listen to the warning and abide with the warning and have proper response to the message of Christ in Jesus' name. Say good amen. Amen. Look at Matthew chapter 24. The words of Christ again. Matthew chapter 24. I'm reading from verse 24. Matthew chapter 24. Let's listen to Christ. You're a child of, you're a child of God. Listen to Christ. You're a disciple of Christ. Listen to Christ. You're born again and you're saved and washed by the blood of the Lamb. Listen to Christ. Matthew chapter 24 verse 24. For there shall rise false Christs and false prophets and shall show great signs and wonders in so much that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. That's their intention. They shall deceive the very elect. That's the intention. Those are already standing. Those are already saved. Those are already steadfast. Those who are selected and elected and they are part of the kingdom of God. They already are saved. They are already born again. And they are still inviting them. Invite the sinners to be born again if you are a real minister of God. If you are a real minister of God, counsel your own people. You already have a congregation. Counsel them. Take care of them. Show them the way of heaven. Not that you will, you know, be reaching out to the people that already know the Lord and they know the watch of the Lord and they just want to deceive. I pray you will not fall in prey to the deceivers in Jesus' name. Say amen now. You think I cannot hear you? Say amen. Behold, verse 25, Behold, I have told you before. Behold, I have told you before. I pray that what the Lord has taught us and what he has told us will go to be obedient to it and the blessing of obedience will be upon your life, upon my life, upon the shepherd, upon the sheep, upon the member, upon the ministers, upon everyone in Jesus name. Let's come now to point number three. Point number three, our expression of love and devoted service. Our expression of love and devoted service. We're coming to Mark chapter 12 and I'm reading from verse 41 all through to verse 44. Look at you from chapter 12 of Mark verse 41. And Jesus sat over against the treasury and beheld how the people cast money into the treasury and many that were rich cast in much. And let's stop there for a moment. Jesus Christ was in the temple and now he was looking at the treasury and people were giving their offering. And people were given their tithes. And people were given all that they ought to give. And the Lord looked at them. And the Lord was watchful. That's how we ought to be watchful. When we're in a congregation and we meet together and we have gone through the order of service and we now come to the time of the service and we're to give our tithes and our offering. There are ushers that ought to be watching. 
and there are security people that ought to be watching so that the offering is going to the right bag and the offering is being carried to the right place and when we're counting there are people our leaders whether they are uh, group pastors or they are group uh, uh, they are women representatives at the selected leaders they are watching what does be like Christ that as people gave their offering and as they contributed all that is being watched over let me come back to that verse 41 again and Jesus sat over against the treasury and beheld how the people cast their money into the treasury and and many that were rich casting much when we are together in a congregation, it's easy for us to raise up what you have, and then we we'll pray over it, and then we we'll give. How about now, when we happen to be at a lockdown situation, if that is happening in your community, that you cannot come, maybe in 50s, in 20s, you are not even allowed to meet at all, and this is the time of offering, at the time of offering in the Sunday service, at the time of offering in the Thursday Miracle Revival Hour, at the time of offering in the Monday Bible study, whatever you have the cash you'll put it aside and put it in the treasury the next sunday comes again you put it there the next uh, monday the next thursday you put it there of course if you have if you do online banking and then you have all those uh, things uh, shown there all the numbers all the account numbers shown there on the screen uh, you can uh, use uh, what you know how to use and then send the offering there but if it's cash you have you put it aside you put it aside so that when we're able to gather together when we're able to bring it or take it to the bank we'll take it to the bank or then or we can bring it in the church and we give the offering and so don't forget that even though you are in your house even though you're in those small small groups as the people gave so also you can give it's an expression of our love it's an expression of a devoted service come to verse 42 and there came a certain poor widow and she threw into mice nothing is too small the Lord knows what you have. He knows what you don't have. And just what you have is what you are going to give. He gave two fathings, which make a, a two mice, which make a farthing. And he called unto him his disciples and said unto them, Verily I say unto you, that this poor widow has cast in has cast more in than all they which have cast in to the treasury for all they cast in of their abundance but she of her wants she of her penury she in her poverty did cast in all that she had even all her living you know what jesus is saying the people who are rich and they bring one tenth, ten percent of what they have. There are people who even go ahead beyond the ten percent and they give fifteen percent and they give twenty percent. And what they have and what they have given will amount to much because they are rich, because they have much, and because of uh, how the Lord has blessed them. 10% will mean much, tithes will mean much, with offering added, getting to 20%, getting to 25%, that will mean much. But this widow, this woman, all that she had, she couldn't even divide into 10. How do you divide two fardings? How do you divide a farthing into 10, two mites into 10? Said, I cannot divide. And instead of uh, saying, I'm going to eat up everything, I'm going to swallow up everything, I'm going to take everything by myself, I cannot divide. I cannot make out 10% from this. I cannot make out 50% from this. And she gave all that she had. She gave 100%. 100% and gave it to the Lord and the Lord commented and said this woman had cast in more than the rest of them walking in percentage 10% much 
20% much, 30% much, but this woman 100%. I pray we'll give all our strength, we'll give all our knowledge without any reservation, we'll give all our skill to serve the Lord, and the Lord will come in heaven, and he will tell the angels, Look at that uh, son, look at that daughter, look at that member, look at that minister. is given much into the service of the Lord. We're coming to 2 Corinthians chapter 8. 2 Corinthians chapter 8, I'm reading from verse 2. In 2 Corinthians chapter 8 verse 2, how that in a great trial of affliction, the abundance of joy, of their joy, and of their deep poverty abounded unto the riches of their liberality. You see, they were poor, the Corinthians, these people that Paul the Apostle in Macedonia was talking about, they were poor, they were uh, indigent, and yet it says they were liberal. Look at verse 3. For to their power I bear record, yea, and beyond their power they were willing of themselves, praying us, pleading with us, with much entreaty that we would receive the gift. What happened here is the apostles said, you know, you have your problems and you have your heartaches and you have your burden and you have your responsibilities to carry. And we know your condition. At this time, we cannot demand anything from you. But he said, no, don't allow us to be cheated out of the blessings of the Lord. Because the Lord said, give and it shall be given unto you. We want to be part of that. We want to be givers. Because as a giver, the blessing of the Lord will then be shoveled into your life. And they were pleading with us, beseeching us and praying us with much entreaty that we would receive the gift and take upon us the fellowship of the ministry to the saints. And this they did. They, this, uh, and this they did not as we hoped. We're not even hoping they'll give anything. Because they had their own body. They had their own challenges. And they had their own expenses to think of. It says, and this they did uh, not as we hoped, but first they gave their own selves to the Lord. They gave their own selves to the Lord. What can I do? I can only fold tracks. What can I do? I can only be a cleaner. What can I do? I can only knock on doors. What can I do? I can only distribute the Christian magazine. What can I do? I can only distribute tracts. What can I do? I can only use my phone and talk to people. And they said, they, not as we hoped. You will think they concentrate on their poverty. They concentrate on their needs. They concentrate on their predicament. But it says, these people, they did much more than we hoped. They first gave themselves unto the Lord and unto us by the will of God. Unto us by the will of God. You see, there are people they are saying, I'm not engaged. I don't have anything to do. And nobody is giving me anything to do. It says they gave themselves to the Lord in the privacy of their room. They prayed and they said, we give ourselves unto you, O Lord. And then they now came out and they gave themselves unto us, unto the apostles, unto the leaders, by the will of God. Maybe you have retired. Maybe you are now out of work. And you are no more going every day to your place of work. But the pastor will not know that. Your group pastor will not know that. And you are just there. You read newspapers and you watch your internet and look at the news. That's okay. That's okay. And then what do you do after that? Read the Bible. What do you do after that? Then you sleep and then you take your rest. Do you know? This is what they are telling us. That if you are taking too much time sleeping 
and two more times sitting down, no exercise, and your blood is not, uh, you know, running, circulating, you might die younger because of that lifestyle. But now that you are retired and you have all the time on your hand and you have your skill and you have your power, you give yourself unto the Lord and then you give yourself unto the church, unto the leadership, I am available. Tell them you are available and the Lord will make use of you and great will be your reward in Jesus' name. And I must uh, remind you of the, of the test of the word of God, the promise of God. We had just this last uh, Thursday that you will serve the Lord your God and he will bless your bread and he will bless your water. You serve him with a intelligence, you serve him with your ability, you serve him with your training, you serve him with your skill. Everything you've got, don't just say I'm retired, I'm not living on pension, and then I'm idle all the day. Bring what you have, bring all your experience and serve the Lord. Great will be your reward here on earth and then in heaven in Jesus' name and with long life will the Lord satisfy you. Let me see a smile on your face and with long life, with God bless you and you will, he will show you his salvation and redemption in Jesus' name. I'm coming to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, I'm reading from verse 14. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 14, for the love of Christ constraineth us. They, because we just judge that if one died, if one died for all, then we're all dead. And that he died for all, that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves. They which live should not live unto themselves. Take part of your time and serve the Lord. Part of your treasure, serve the Lord. Part of your money, give and serve the Lord. Part of your experience, give out and serve the Lord. The Lord needs you. He needs your service so that they which labor would not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again. Be an ambassador for Christ. Verse 20, now then. We are ambassadors for Christ. As though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled unto God, and be ye devoted unto God, and give of what you have. It's blessed to be a giver. It's blessed to give. Acts chapter 20, reading from verse 35. Acts chapter 20, Seek the expansion of the kingdom of God. Seek the establishment of the kingdom of God. Seek the extension of the kingdom of God by your service, by your evangelism, by your edification, by your follow-up, by your giving, your material uh, things that you have. Have you read during this uh, time of a lockdown and during this time of challenge the government is even saying uh, if there's a house there an apartment there that is not being used you can give and there are people there are organizations they're giving whole houses a house they're not using and they give it for an isolation center and uh, there are people that even give a dome and this and that and they give it for isolation center if people can do that because they have the love of our community and the love of our citizens how about us giving a whole house for service when the opportunity is there how about us giving a landed property when the chance is there how about us giving a place a family is not using sometimes the family members are overseas and the house is just uh, there empty and vacant why can't we give and thank God for those who are doing that it is blessed to give uh, and the Lord will bless uh, your giving and your gifts in Jesus name we're coming to Acts chapter 20 and we're reading from the start I have showed you all things, how that so laboring ye ought to support the weak, support the weak, 
A weak individual supports the weak. A weak family supports the weak. A, a, a weak brother, a weak sister, the sick and they have nothing to pay for hospital, support the weak. They don't have something to eat, support the weak. Look at that youth and look at that young, uh, young uh, upcoming child, uh, uh, no father, no mother, or maybe has a parent but he cannot pay school fees, support the weak. And to remember the words of the Lord Jesus, uh, how he said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. It is more blessed to give than to receive. As the Lord Jesus took note of that widow woman in Mark where we're studying how she gave and uh, she took note of her, the Lord will take note of you. He will take care of you. He will bless you. He will bless your giving. He will say, because you've done it to that, my son. You've done it to that, my daughter. You've done it to that local church. We've done it to that uh, central church. You've done it to the headquarters church. You've done it unto me also. And great will be your reward in heaven in Jesus' name. I'm praying for you that everything you give uh, uh, to help people, to sustain people, and to help young people, to uh, help the families, you will not lose your reward in Jesus' name. In Matthew now, chapter 25. Matthew chapter 25, I'm reading from verse 34. Matthew chapter 25, verse 34. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, on the final day, I pray for you, you'll be on his right hand. Brother, you'll be on his right hand. Sister, you'll be on his right hand. My boy, my girl there, even though you are young, you also can give. You can give your talent, musical talent. You can give your talent, all those artistic talent, and all the ICT knowledge and talent. You can give that to you, and you'll be on the right hand side of that wonderful day. Come, ye blessed of my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was unhungered. And ye gave me meat, I was thirsty, and ye gave me drink, I was a stranger, and ye took me in, and naked, and ye clothed me, I was sick, and ye visited me, I was in prison, and ye came unto me, then shall the righteous answer, saying, Lord, when saw we thee, and hungered, and fed thee, or thirsty, and gave thee drink, when saw we thee, a stranger, and took thee in, or naked, and clothed thee? Or when saw we thee sick, or in prison, and came unto thee? And the king shall say, and the king shall answer, and say unto them, I pray on the final day you'll hear the good word of the Lord. You'll hear the good commenting words of the Lord. Every little thing you have given, every farthing you have given, every might you have given, every skill you have given will be rewarded on that final day in Jesus' name. You will not lose your reward. And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye have done it unto one of the least of my brethren, ye have done it unto me. Ye have done it unto me. Ye have done it unto me. Heaven is waiting for you. And the kingdom of God is awaiting you. At this time now, nobody is let out. You can do something. At this time now, you can teach other people. You can evangelize other people. You can train other people. You can encourage other people. You can give strength to other people. You can give uh, conviction to other people. You can give boldness, confidence, courage to other people. You can give money to other people. You can give food to other people. You can give tracts to other people. You can help in the work of the Lord. You have something. Give it out so that the people of God will be blessed by your giving. And in this life, the Lord will bless you. And in the life to come, the Lord will bless you as well. Remember, we need to have proper response to the Lordship of Christ. You see your Lord, you see your Savior, what's your response to him? As your Lord, you cannot just fold your hand and close your mouth and close your eyes and do nothing and say, it's my Lord, let there be a practical, positive 
progressive, profitable, proper response to the Lordship, to the Lordship of Christ over your life. Let's rise up now and talk to the Lord in prayer. Let's rise up, talk to the Lord in prayer. The Lord has spoken to you. The Lord has enlightened you. The Lord has exposed his mind unto you. Tell the Lord, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I now know that the Old Testament was given by the Holy Ghost. I love you, Lord, and I love your word. That those words that David spoke, they were given by the Holy Ghost. I will no more treat your word as common. Your word as ordinary. I'm going to always now treat your word with respect, with honor. I'm going to treat your word like it's coming directly from you by the Holy Ghost. Even though David said it, even though Moses said it, even though Joshua said it, even though Caleb said it, even though Isaiah said it, everything I've read from your word, I now understand, is given by the Holy Ghost. And my proper response is to believe that word, to accept that word, to live by that word. Not only that, all the words of the apostles in the New Testament, in the Gospels, in the Acts of the Apostles, in the Epistles, all through to Revelation, I now know Everything was given by the Holy Ghost. And I love that word. I reverence that word. I receive that word. I abide in that word. I continue in that word. Give me grace to have this proper response, practical response, profitable response, purposeful response, perennial permanent response to the word of God. He has warned you, he has warned me, he has warned us of the leaven of, this, of deceptive scribes. Lord, help me that I will not have any love for error. Help me, Lord, I will not have any love for falsehood. Help me, Lord, I will not have any love for for empty religion without eternal righteousness. I will not have any love for false prophets and then abandon the true preaching of the word of God. As you told me to take heed and to beware of the leaven, of the deception, of the falsehood, of the error, of the darkness, of religious superstition, Help me, Lord, that every time I will stay clear of those dece deceivers. And if I've got their material, if I've got any link with them, Lord, in proper response unto you, pure response unto you, expected response unto you, I cut off from all those deceivers. I'll not allow anyone to blindfold me, to deceive me, and to pull me and drag me to a lost eternity. Lord, I'll honor your word. I'll respond to your word. I'll stay by your word. I'll be strengthened by your word. And Lord, I want to express my love. I want to express my love by giving myself soul, spirit, and body, body, spirit, and soul, all of me, everything I have within and around, everything I have accumulated, knowledge since I came to this world until this time, all my skill, all my training, anything, everything that can be useful in the kingdom of God. Lord, I offer everything now without any reservation. I offer everything now my intelligence, my mind, my reasoning, my faculties, my knowledge, my ability, my devotedness, my love, my affection. I offer everything. And of course, Lord, whatever I have, big or small, much or little, I give my tithe. I'll keep on giving my offering and then I'll be giving in the church. And even at this time of the lockdown, I'll not forget 
at the time of offering, I still offer, lay it aside, so that when eventually we come together, I'll bring everything in a practical way. I'll be productive, I'll touch lives, I'll turn lives unto the Lord. Tell the Lord, the Lord sees you there. Don't just be looking in what? I don't have much of the little you have, of the small things you have. Give, and it shall be given unto you. Press down, shaking together, running over. Shall God and man put in your bosom. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. No worry, no anxiety. The Lord will supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Don't, don't forget, it's more blessed to give than to receive. Tell the Lord, I respond properly, promptly, cheerfully, willingly. I respond obediently to the word I've learned today. God bless you. Let's pray together. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the teaching of your word. Thank you for the exposition. We know about your humility, about your humanity. And we know about your divinity. We know you came as a siege of David. And yet you're going to reign as the very son of God. And your kingdom will have no end. You have a kingdom, you have a dominion that is going to go from generation to generation. And thank you, Lord, because you have made us part of that kingdom. We pray, Lord, the grace to abide in the kingdom. The grace to be useful in the kingdom. And the grace to remain in the kingdom without looking away, without looking back, without going back from the kingdom, without listening to false prophets, and without listening or taking or partaking of the leaven of the deceptive scribes. Give us the grace in Jesus' name. And Lord, at every opportunity, will give what we have. At every opportunity, we'll not be thinking of ourselves, give me, give me, I want to get, I want to get more. But Lord, of what we have already, cheerfully and willingly, in a practical way and purposefully, and because of the gospel, we'll keep on giving and giving and giving so that our life and our resources will be of blessing, spiritual blessing, material blessing uh, to all people around us in Jesus' name. I will stand on your promises that as we give, uh, you'll give back unto us multiplied fold in Jesus' name. I pray, Lord, that your goodness, your grace, your power will abide with all your people. And this word we have heard will move us forward, will make progress in the kingdom of God in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. I do appreciate you being at the Bible study. I love you, and I love the way you respond to the word of God. May the Lord find you faithful all the days of your life. And as the blessings of God come upon you, I will see, I will rejoice with you because God is a faithful God. He will bless your proper response to the teaching of the word of God. Thank you, and God bless you.